So I'm Melanie at the Vancouver Yoga Center and I'm here with Shanti, one of our teachers at the studio again and we're doing a bunch of video tutorials on tips and tricks and yoga poses, some alignment techniques and we just did a whole step-by-step -step of headstand and the stages to get into headstand but some are not quite ready for headstand. So we have some headstand props that we're going to show how we can play with these um, in prepping us to get into headstand. And the first one that we're going to show is an actual device that is designed for going upside down for headstand. Um, so she's going to come to this and show us how we use this. She's going to grab a hold of the, the handrails that are in the front and there is a big gap for her head to go down. She wants to aim about the middle. So not having her shoulders all the way to the back of the device, but have her shoulders right in the middle. We talked in the tutorial about keeping our back really straight and getting the back really strong as we walk our feet into downward dog. So she's gonna come in walking in and thinking of there's like a wall that's actually touching her back, not rolling back to the wall that's actually there, but pre preventing the roll by imagining a wall straight up and down on her backside so she's strong there. And then the one in the last tutorial was we learned how to draw our knee in, hold it in, and draw the other and hold that and build strength there. And then pause. We're going to lead with the knees rather than the feet. If she leads with the feet, let go let the feet go up to the sky. They often end a little forward of the body and it's a bit harder on the back and spine, but bend your knees again. And if she keeps everything in and goes in stages, now go knees to the sky. Yeah, without the urge of the feet just yet. And then feet to the sky and she takes it in those stages, she'll stack a little bit better and build some strength along the way for each of those stages. And that's just what we're gonna do pretty much in the next ones too. To come out, go the same way, go knees bend, you pull in to the belly, and then you actually pull up the belly and round the back a little. So do a kidney loop, pull into the core, and then slowly lower down to the floor. And then you're gonna be having a lot of blood flow in the head, so it takes a little bit when you come back up and you might feel a little loop-de-loo. -loo. So, Maybe even hang out there for a bit. Let the blood kind of acclimate and then take it slow to come back upright. And so the next device is if you don't have one of these fancy contraptions that you probably bought on Amazon and spent hundreds or so dollars on, then you can use two, two chairs. <coughs> Excuse me. And so we blanket so it makes it a little softer. She's going to hold the front of the chairs and place the head again in the middle rather than behind, way in the back, the tendency is like, there's a wall, I want the wall for support. But we have to build, we're using this as a way to build up the strength. So let's place hands and place the head in the middle. And I'm roughly looking that her, um, that if she's too far back, her arms won't really be bent. They're gonna be a little bit more straight and she's not gonna have that support and power um, in her foundation. So right now she's in the middle of the chairs and we're going to walk in like we did all those other ones, getting the back as straight as we can, making it strong. We walk in until the knees hug into the belly, and there's our core. And then we're going to keep the feet close to the butt, and we're going to tip the pelvis and start letting the knees. And then the, here, the wall sometimes gets in the way, and we just have to go up from there. Take the feet a little further back, some that tendency. Nice. And then go really slow on the way back down. Really use this as the coming out phase to build even more strength. We go knees to the belly. And then we draw the belly in and a little tuck of the tail. And then you just hover your way down, slow, 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 slow. So you build maybe, if you didn't have the strength coming up and you had to do a little bit more of a hop, um, then you learn to build it on the way back down and out. So show if somebody didn't have that ability to really draw one knee in and the other knee in, and they had to use like a little bit of like hopping momentum to get up. The chair is a bit higher than this other device, so it takes a bit more to get your pelvis up. So she may have to make it a kind of a quicker hop to get the legs up. Perfect, and then come back down. So then she can learn what needs to be worked in the core on the way down. Build it there as she comes back up. Now a bit more advanced is, um, is to do a headstand in what we call more classic tripod where your hands are on the ground and your head's on the floor. Headstand, um, people are often scared of weight on their neck and issues with their neck. So all three of these devices takes the problem of the neck out of the picture, but also teaches you how to build some strength and um, gets you upside down and gets the benefits of the inversion. So this next one is how to do that tripod headstand without the pressures on the neck. So she's gonna come and place her hands in front or slightly to the side of the blocks. And each block there is for her shoulders and her heads the middle, she might be closer to the wall than those other ones, but she's basically making a 90 degree angle with her arms, and she does the same work if she can, pulls in. The wall's gonna be here much sooner, 
and then she goes back up. And then she can get used to this idea of being upside down and how that feels. And then we come out in stages if we can, rather than just flying out. We build the strength as we come out to come back down. We take our time to let the head come back up. Great. <laughs> Lovely. So now if we are actually ready for headstand, but we still have maybe some worries about the neck and worries about um, the rolling of the neck and the strength of the upper back that's maybe not quite there yet. There's a little block configuration that we could do to offer support so that it keeps the back straight and prevents you from rolling on your neck. It makes it a little bit harder to get up, but means that we just have to work all our things um, to get up. So we have one block on the high setting, one block on the medium setting sticking out. So the side view would look like this. Here's the wall, here's a block, here's a block. And then her setup would be this, this, this type of tripod, hands in front of the blocks, head goes down. So that when she comes in, she's not rounding her back. The blocks prevent the rounding. So she's gonna do that headstand showing you just the steps and I'll tell you when she hits the block. So she does her hand clasp that we learned, her elbows in line with her shoulders, her head in that place where the neck is even on all sides, and she's trying to create the wall with her back, but if she doesn't have that ability to, the blocks do it for her at a certain point. And you'll end up touching the blocks, and then she eventually does her stages to come back up. Now, there's a detriment to the blocks too, because people often like hanging out in them. So once you're at the wall, we can have our feet at the wall and take our heart away from the blocks and then our pelvis, and then we just find our center line from there. So it's just a safety tool for the neck. And then she tries to come down, Whoa! <laughs> using all those tools, but we've been doing it so many times now, we're getting a bit tired. So, <laughs> so those are some tricks in uh, using props for a headstand. And um, I hope you enjoyed it, and we hope to see you in class, Vancouver Yoga Center. You can view our website, VancouverYogaCenter.com. There's full list of schedule and some online classes as well. We'll see you next time.